You at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. You know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks, the idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. <laughs> folks. That right there was probably my favorite moment of the entire State of the Union address by President Joe Biden because he did something that he doesn't do enough, and that is call out the extremism of Republicans. And this moment was crucial because he kind of got them to show their cards. So you saw the responses when he said that they want to cut Social Security, and they were just indignant. They feigned outrage. You know, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Mike Lee in particular, their responses were um, interesting to me, especially Mike Lee's. But Marjorie Taylor Greene throughout the entire State of the Union, you could hear her screaming at Joe Biden for various reasons. And it was just genuinely embarrassing, unhinged and trashy, but exactly what I'd expect from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But um, she responded to questions about why she chose to call out Joe Biden. And here's what she said. You know what? People are pissed off. And for the president of the United States to come into the people's house and lie like he did about the economy, the border, and then act like he's terrified of China and unwilling to talk about the fact they spied on us last night. Yeah, he, he got exactly what he deserved. And I am not sorry one bit. And I don't think Speaker McCarthy is upset with any of us. For, for expressing our views and being unwilling to allow the president to lie. What am I going to do? Stand up and give golf claps? No, thank you. I don't clap for liars. I love how Marjorie Taylor Greene is calling out somebody else's lies while not being aware of the irony here. She's one of the biggest liars. And maybe she's not even lying. Maybe she's just genuinely misinformed about 99.9% .9 of the issues that she talks about. Either way, what she did was effectively turn the State of the Union into the Jerry Springer show. And she did this last time with her and Boebert heckling Joe Biden, if you'll all remember that. Uh, but it's not that I am inherently against heckling the president during the State of the Union. You know, I don't care about civility or decorum. But what I care about is why you're heckling the president. So, for example, if Democrats during Trump's State of the Unions would have heckled him for the terrible things that he said, I would have liked that. So I'm not against the heckling. It's me being against the dumb things that she's choosing to get outraged about. And Mike Lee, you saw that he was incredibly indignant at Biden calling out Republicans response or calling out Republicans wanting to cut Social Security. Now, it's funny that he, of all people, would feign outrage considering the explicit things that he said about Social Security. So this video was put together by the Midas Touch where they juxtapose his reaction with things that he said about Social Security. And you, you just you can't come back after you've said this, like you can't pretend to support Social Security after you've been filmed saying this. It will be my objective to phase out Social Security, Denied. to pull it up by the roots and get rid of it. Um, people who advise me politically always tell me that's dangerous. And I tell them, in that case, it's not worth my running. That's why I'm doing this, to get rid of that. Medicare and Medicaid are of the same sort and need to be pulled up. He wants to pull Social Security up by the roots and get rid of it. I mean, he's just saying it. Of all the Republicans who talked about the variety of ways that they want to undermine Social Security, Mike Lee should be the least offended by Biden's remarks given what he said. And just pause for a moment. Don't ever let this fact be lost on you when we're talking about how the GOP wants to cut Social Security. That's your money. 
If a bank were to just take the money that you deposited and give it to rich people or spend it on something, you would be outraged, right? You'd view that as theft. So conceptually, we need to think about what the Republicans are doing as theft as well. If you saw Mike Lee on the streets and you walked up to him and you snatched his tie or you stole his watch, I'm not saying that you should do this, but if you did that to him, if you stole from him directly, he would be outraged and justifiably so. But when it comes to you, since you're a peasant, since what you want doesn't matter, since your money is less important, then he's perfectly fine effectively doing the same thing to you, stealing from you. And look, it's not just Mike Lee who has proposed cuts to Social Security. CNN reporter Daniel Dale reminded everyone of Senator Rick Scott's plan to sunset all federal legislation, which was so unpopular that Mitch McConnell even had to come out and denounce that plan because it would include Social Security as well. And let's be clear, Mitch McConnell wants to cut Social Security, but he knows that you have to uphold this facade that Republicans don't want to cut Social Security because their base will never let them get away with that. Now, there's more. As Common Dreams explains, beyond Scott's plan, the Republican Study Committee, the largest caucus of House Republicans, released a budget proposal last year that advocated gradually raising the retirement age, a change that would cut Social Security benefits across the board. The Washington Post reported last month that some House Republicans have resurfaced the above plan and other possible changes, including bipartisan trust fund commissions in recent days as they push for far-reaching federal spending cuts in exchange for for any agreement to raise the U.S. debt ceiling. As part of a speakership deal with far-right House Republicans, McCarthy agreed to advocate for a cap on federal spending at fiscal year 2022 levels, which would entail deep cuts to education spending, public health programs, and other critical areas. So let's be very clear. These people are liars. The Republican Party is lying to you. And the only reason why you saw that strong reaction is because they were called out. They absolutely want to cut Social Security. They've been broadcasting it for decades now. But they know that they have to uphold this facade that they want to protect Social Security because it would be deeply unpopular if they just said what they wanted to do, which is why we always have to catch them saying it behind closed doors. Now, Biden actually got them to applaud Social Security once he kind of backed them into a corner. So let's watch that. As we all apparently agree, Social Security and Medicare is off the, off the books now, right? They're not to be sponsored. All right. I'm ready. We got unanimity. Social Security and Medicare are a lifeline for millions of seniors. Americans have to pay into them from the very first paycheck they started. So tonight, let's all agree, and we apparently are, let's stand up for seniors. Stand up and show them we'll not cut Social Security. We will not cut Medicare. Those benefits belong to the American people. They earned it. And if anyone tries to cut Social Security, which apparently no one's going to do, and if anyone tries to cut Medicare, I'll stop them. I'll veto it. And look, I'm not going to allow them to take away, be taken away. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. But apparently it's not going to be a problem. That was actually well played by Biden, strategically speaking. He got Republicans to go from booing him to applauding him when he says that we should protect Social Security. They know they have to uphold that facade. But here's where Biden can really pin their balls to the wall, for lack of a better word. Call their bluff right now. And there's a way that you can do that. As Nancy Altman, the president of Social Security Works, suggested in an op-ed for Common Dreams, the White House should now release a plan to expand Social Security and call on Republicans to release their own plan to protect Social Security. And then you let the American people decide who's actually telling the truth. Exactly. Now, the Republican Party, they don't actually want to protect Social Security. And I would bet that they wouldn't go along with the White House plan to do just that. There's an easy fix if you want Social Security to remain solvent for decades. You lift the cap on taxable income. But Republicans want to create the sense of urgency and false sense that you're going to lose your Social Security if reforms aren't made immediately 
because that's the ways that they're going to undermine social security, right? They create this sense of, oh my God, it's going bankrupt. We have to do something. We have to act and take drastic measures to protect the program when we all know that the fix is really simple. So if Biden were to propose lifting the cap on taxable income, which would make social security solvent for decades, they wouldn't go along with it. We know that they're lying. So I think that that was well played by Joe Biden here. Now, moving on, I want to talk about another instance where the State of the Union essentially devolved into the Jerry Springer show, where Mitt Romney actually confronted George Santos on camera. And we didn't know what was said at the time that this was caught. But we now know, thanks to George Santos, detailing this exchange with the reporter. So Mitt told him, you don't belong here. Santos responded by saying, go tell that to the 142,000 that voted for me. Mitt Romney said, you're an ass. Santo said, you're a much bigger asshole. I love it. I love this so much. You can tell that Mitt Romney made some remark to George Santos, and I'm glad that he called him out. I don't like Mitt Romney, but I don't like George Santos either. So I love whenever these goons fight each other. But Mitt Romney explained why he decided to confront George Santos uh, afterwards when reporters asked him about this. You just said you don't belong here. Yeah. Why, why, why did you say, say that? To you? I didn't expect that he'd be standing there trying to shake hands with every senator <laughs> in the President of the United States. That's, uh, given, given the fact that he's under ethics investigation, he should be sitting in the back row and staying quiet instead of uh, parading in front of the uh, president and, uh, and, and, and people coming into the room. Do he look, respond look, to look, you? Look, look, he, respond? He, sa he says he, uh, you know, that he embellished his record. Look, embellishing is saying you got an A when you got an A minus. Lying is saying you, you graduated from a college you didn't even attend. And, and he shouldn't be in Congress, and uh, no. they're going to go through the process and hopefully get him out. And uh, but he shouldn't be there. And, and uh, if he had any shame at all, he wouldn't be there. Why did, did you, you make him? a point to say that, though? I mean, it, you went, I mean, it was kind of out of your way to. Well, to he was say standing that. right there in the aisle, shaking hands with everybody. Did he respond to you? Uh, he, he may have. I didn't hear. Are anything you disappointed he said. that Kevin McCarthy is not calling him to resign? Yes. Well, so in case you didn't hear it, he was asked at the end there if he was disappointed that Kevin McCarthy didn't call on George Santos to resign, and he said yes. So, yeah. Now, uh, George Santos was not done with Mitt Romney because he decided to snipe at him via Twitter, writing, hey, Mitt Romney, just a reminder that you will never be president. Look, I, I wish that Congress was comprised of uh, politicians that actually cared about anything other than their own careers and petty bullshit, but this is what we have. We have a bunch of lull cows that were forced to milk to distract us from the fact that Congress is sitting idly by as multiple crises go unaddressed. And it's a sad fact. It's dystopian, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll still enjoy watching them fight each other any day of the week. Now, if I can take a moment to just talk about Biden's State of the Union, I think that overall his speech was pretty good. Um, every single State of the Union speech is bad. Every State of the Union speech that I've ever heard, I have been unimpressed with. This one is no different, but out of all of the unimpressive State of the Union speeches, this one is probably the best. And I say that specifically because if you are a normie and you don't really follow politics too closely, I think that hearing Biden say populist things like bringing jobs back that were shipped overseas, manufacturing in America, uh, buying America first... I think that these things are going to resonate with the American people. I think that him talking about the variety of ways that corporations are screwing working class people, I think that that is going to land well with normal voters. Now, currently, polling says that he's not doing too well. I would predict that maybe he gets a little bit of a bump because of that speech. And I think, you know, it's it's surface level things. But if you go a little bit deeper, you'll see that all of the things that Biden is proposing it doesn't go far enough when he talks about lowering the cost of health care. I'm sorry, but if we lived in a sane world, you would be calling for Medicare for all. He talks about how we should celebrate capping the cost of insulin for seniors on Medicare. I'm sorry, but if we lived in a sane world, we would cap the cost of insulin for everyone and go further than that. Just make it free because guess what? We're the richest country on the planet and we can afford to do that. Aside from that, you know, the American exceptionalism, 
was present and insufferable. The Republicans were insufferable, heckling him at the dumbest moments. That's not to say that Biden should not have been heckled for a couple of things that he said, but they choose to heckle him for the dumbest reasons. For example, when he's talking about fentanyl, what do they do? They say, oh, close the border. They all scream in unison, close the border, as if he's not doing the exact border policies that Trump was doing. So they're all disingenuous, both Republicans and Democrats. But when it comes to who actually is closer to the American people, at least rhetorically speaking, I think that Biden made it clear that he is trying to appeal to normal working class people. Now, his actions don't line up with that rhetoric. But still, when it comes to overall appeal and how this speech is going to be perceived, I think that it's going to land pretty well. Either way, it was a show because Republicans made it that way. But at least it was a little bit entertaining, so uh, maybe we'll thank them for that. Either way, um, it was uh, an hour and a half or so that I wish I could get back, if I'm being perfectly honest. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.